Welcome to the second episode of the Story Developer Series. In this lecture, we take the ideas you developed over the past week and see if they contain the necessary elements to make a good story before you commit to writing your first draft. Last time, I showed you several programs that can help with your writing. This time, I'm going to discuss a program that is indispensable for every writer. Dropbox. Why Dropbox and not just Evernote? You have to be very conscious of what you are putting in your Evernote file and how files are tagged so you can find them again later. That's not what you want when it comes to your novel. We have all made the mistake of forgetting to push save and losing part of the novel. Once you set up Dropbox on your desktop, the program runs in the background saving your novel to your personal cloud every time you make any changes without you having to be involved. Downloading Dropbox puts a little blue box icon on your desktop. Like this one. Click on the box and a file opens up. Anything you put in this file is saved to your personal cloud. If your computer burns up in fire or a nuclear meltdown or is eaten by wild wolves, your novel is safe. You can make a shortcut of any file from the Dropbox to your desktop, so you don't even have to realize anything has changed. For example, if I wanted to add things to my export file regularly, I could right-click it and put Create Shortcut, or simply send to the desktop, which creates a shortcut. And there's my export shortcut. I can rename this if I want, but anything I put in here will eventually show up here and then on my personal cloud. Every change I make in this file over here instantly saves to my cloud every time I log my computer into the internet. These green check marks right here mean that the file is current in the cloud. An icon in your toolbar should show that the entire Dropbox is currently saved to the cloud. Right-clicking will confirm this fact, and it will also show recent changes that you made. You can change some preferences and pause your syncing if you're low on space, or get more space here, or see how much space that you've already used. Dropbox works beautifully with Scrivener. In your blue Dropbox file, create a file called Scrivener. And in here, create a file called Scrivener Backups. Now, in your Scrivener project, go to File, Backup, Backup to, Browse, and you can find your Dropbox. And then I have mine in something called Writer. Scrivener, Scrivener Backups, and select that folder. Press OK. Now it's creating a backup of everything that's in my Scrivener project to that backup folder. Every time I close this program up here, Scrivener will back up everything that's in my project and it'll back it up to the cloud so it'll be safe. It will also save the last five revisions that I made to this whole program. So if you make a huge mistake, you can go back in time and correct it. You can alter how often Scrivener backs up your files or how many backups it saves by going to Tools, Options, and Backups. 
I highly recommend that you turn on automatic backups because that it would be the point of having a safe file for them to go to. I also recommend that you back up your project every time it closes and every time you manually save. This is where you can change where it backs up and how often it backs up. I think this technology is so crucial that I've created a tab in our blog that goes directly to the Dropbox. Pressing this tab takes you to our collective file in Dropbox right here and this is where I will be putting the Scrivener template that we're using and if you don't have Scrivener where you can download the Word files for the worksheets that are in the Scrivener template. Any file in this box can be seen and downloaded by everyone in the group. Anyone in the group can put something in this box for everyone to see. It's a great place for us to leave manuscripts for others to critique. One caveat, don't change any of the files in this box. Uh, download them to your computer and change them and then re-upload them because if you change them in here, then they are changed for everyone and not just you. At Dropbox.com, you can download this app for your computer desktop. You just simply press on the icon and it will start to download. However, you don't need the app or to be part of the Dropbox community in order to download the things that are in the Content Cathedral shared box. You can simply click on one of these and download it. Take note of where your computer has downloaded this file and open it. It is a zip file, so some computers will force you to extract the file before you actually use it. Extract it until you can see all the files and then push Sherry's Blizzard template. If you click the Word file after you download it to your computer, you can just open it in the Word program and follow along. Once you open the downloaded template, it should look something like this. The first thing you want to do is save this as your own. So go to File, Save as Template, and rename it here. And also go to Save As, and this will give you a project, and you probably want to put this in your Scrivener backups or somewhere in your Scrivener. Now you have an open project and your own template, and you can change whatever you like. You might want to name the project something like Story Ideas 2016, and then next year start a new project from the template called Story Ideas 2017. But for now, we're just going to explore this project. Well, first, we're going to go to this triangular eye here for information, and just see what's in there. This is a page I included with uh, some background history and some instructions for various things in the template. You can read through there at your leisure. I modeled this template after Randy Ingerman's son's snowflake method. You can read his original article under the, the information file right here. I will also put a link in the show notes. I've also placed that link and several other important links in the project references which you can access by turning on the inspector, which is right over there, and going to this stack of books here. Make sure that you're in the project ref references because the individual document references don't have anything. And then these are all the links th that I have, including the original Snowflake method, which will take you directly to the internet site where he keeps the Snowflake method. I am a big fan of Randy Ingerman's son. He is not only the inventor of the snowflake method, but he runs a great site for writers called Advanced Fiction Writing. And you can sign up for his e-zine, which gives you wonderful advice and links every month, and he never spams you. You could do worse than to model your sales platform after Randy. Okay. So now let's get down to your story ideas. I hope you have a couple of them that we can work with.
This first test will be from Larry Brooks Story Engineering. Larry is a talented editor and runs the popular site for writers called StoryFix.com. Yes, there will be links on the show notes. I built in room for three ideas. But you can duplicate the last idea before you use it and make as many ideas as you want. You can also import any of the things that are in these ideas from the template by going up here, pressing on this arrow, and importing from the template. For your first idea, we're going to test the idea first by making a log line. Start by introducing us to your main character. Don't use his or her name. Use a descriptor like classic ballet dancer working as a rodeo clown or blind fighter pilot, something like that. Mention the main character's goals. What are the main character's stakes? And how has his or her world or situation changed to become a personal problem for that character. Put your log line down here, polish it up a little, and we'll continue. Now let's evaluate that log line. First of all, what genre is it in? Do you know? Are you familiar with that genre? Will this log line stand out in that genre? How will it be unique? Is it looking at something in a new way? Is it more clever, unexpected, terrifying? Something that the reader won't see coming? Does your log line imply some sort of conflict for the protagonist or main character to resolve? And will this conflict impact their inner life so that character can be revealed on the page? Is that conflict within the mind of the character? Love versus duty, being active versus standing back and seeing what happens next. Free will versus addiction, spirit versus carnal desire, rational versus emotional, immortality versus death. Is it between the mind of your character and his physical limitations? Perhaps he's handicapped. Between your protagonist and those close to the protagonist, like family members or friends, co-workers. Between your main character and his society. Or perhaps between your main character and the universe itself, his luck or misfortune. Part of making a novel popular is making it relevant to at least some of today's readers. How does this idea touch people in their lives as they are today? Is it a memorable idea? Does it challenge belief systems and values? Are you selling an idea? by trying to argue one side of a complex issue, or are you exploring a theme that's complex and multifaceted? People who are selling something in today's world are looked down upon, and it is difficult to make a novel that people want to read when you're selling something like a moral tale. Now consider the individual elements of your log line. This should be pretty easy because they should be right in front of you. Put down who is your character. That was the blind fighter pilot or whatever you had here. The basic situation that that person is in that is forcing them to change their actions. The goal that they have. It doesn't really matter whether they succeed in their goal by the end of the book, but the goal that they start with. Who is getting in the way or what is getting in the way of their goal? And the stakes. Think about whether you can write an understandable statement with character, situation, and objective. Something like, when humans suddenly grow to 12 feet high, your main character tries to figure out why. Now, can you write a yes or no question with just opponent and disaster? Something like, but can he defeat a government that wants to keep the plot a secret to aid extraterrestrials? What you should have at this point should sound something like the blurb at the back of a novel. 
you can massage these two statements until they make a good controlling premise, or a blurb. The controlling premise is a guiding light to your story idea. While it is in development and first draft phase, it keeps you from going off track when you are creating your novel. The last test is from James Scott Bell and his book, Plot and Structure, which I mentioned in our last broadcast. He calls this one hook, line, and sinker. Can you grab the reader's attention with the idea, compel them to read into the story? Can you truncate your log line to a tagline that is short and snappy like, in space, no one can hear you scream? Now the really hard part. What could make this idea sink? What are the disadvantages of pursuing this particular idea? Hopefully, you can do this for several ideas and pick one that is the most promising. Put that one in the comments for the show notes and I will do the same. That's all I have for now. Next time, we'll talk about pantsers and plotters and fill in some of the elements of your most promising story.